It's almost May, so naturally in today's What Sold video, we're gonna finish talking about my March sales and I'm wearing like the thickest of all sweaters because it's freezing outside. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a part-time reseller and on my reselling channel, I like to do these What Sold videos in which I share with you everything that sold for me over the span of a week. I like to share where I picked up the item, how much I paid for it, where it sold, how much net profit I made off of it. So if that sounds interesting to you and if you feel like you'll get a lot of value out of that, definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button because I do a video like this every single week as well as tips and tricks videos, haul videos, all of the fun things. So definitely subscribe to be a part of this little community and thank you for being here. So we're gonna jump right in and we are talking about the end of March and getting into April. I promised you that I'm gonna get caught up and I'm so close. So we're talking about Monday, which was March 27th, all the way to April 2nd. On Monday, March 27th, I started the week off with nothing, zero sales. It was still really slow. We actually closed and we did two closings in one day. We did the closing for the house that we used to live in and the closing for the house that we're in now. We did both of them on the same day and that was on March 31st. So this week was like, crazy packing mode, you know, talking to the moving company, making sure we had all of our ducks in a row. This was a crazy week, I remember. Um, but thankfully, I was still able to make some sales. Not on Monday, though. So on Tuesday, which was March 28th, on eBay, I had two sales. The first one was this pair of Democracy Floral Embroidered Girlfriend Skinny Jeans in a size 4. I see Democracy pretty often at the thrift store and I always leave it behind. However, I've seen some resellers on you know, their stories on Instagram and on YouTube sharing about how this brand sells really well for them. So when I saw this at a garage sale for $2, I was like, I'll just try. Like, let me just try picking it up and see how it does. It, it did not do well. <laughs> like it sat for a very long time. It would get interest here and there. People would like the item. People would watch the item. No one was making any offers or anything like that though. So I finally got it to move for $16 on eBay. So once you factor in eBay's fees, my cost of goods, my net profit on those was $9.89. So, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes people do really, really well with certain brands. Like I tend to do pretty well with Talbots and it's a brand that I find really often in my area for very cheap, so I pick it up. However, I've heard from other resellers, even some of you who watch my channel, you're like, I cannot get my Talbots to move. It's really interesting how different things work for different people, um, but this is one of those brands where a lot of people talked about how well it moved for them, and that just was not the case for me. But I figured that out by trying, and with such a low cost of goods into the item, I'm okay with trying new things. The next item to sell was this new with tags Anthropology Maeve Crosswise Bandage Fit and Flare Dress in a size eight. This item sold for $49.99, which was my full asking price. And it was something that I held on to for a while. I feel like it was listed for close to a year, I wanna say. This I actually got as part of a palette from a reseller when I bought some inventory off of her. So I had about $3.92 into that dress. So my net profit on it was $36.20. I know a lot of people have said that Anthropology is definitely a slower mover now than it has been, but I still find that it does pretty decently. Um, it's still something that you know gets a lot of attention. People are still liking the items. Um, so I definitely am still picking up Anthropology if I find it. it is one of those brands though where I think it's pretty important to check comps because there are some pieces that are just too saturated online and your item is not going to stand out against anyone else's but there are also lots of like rare anthropology pieces or brands you know that are sold at anthropology that people are always looking for so you just kind of have to know your stuff I don't really when it comes to anthropology I just kind of list it all if it appeals to me and if I think it's cute and I also try to do a better job of running comps on Wednesday which was March 29th Again, zero sales. And I probably didn't even notice because I was barely sleeping as I tried to pack up my entire house. But on Thursday, which was March 30th, I sold three things on three different platforms. And I kind of like explicitly remember being kind of irritated because of the fact that we were gonna be moving and like shipping was just the last thing that I wanted to think about. But on eBay, I sold this pair of Reeker, 
you guys, I sell this brand like a decent amount and I still don't know how to say it. Riker? Riker? It was this pair of taupe leather slip-on comfort fisherman shoes in a European size 40, which translates to a European eight and a half. Those sold for $30. I had $4 into them from a local Goodwill, and so I made a net profit of $19.49. Reeker is a really great comfort brand. They don't make like cute, trendy shoes, but you know, they make pieces that people are looking for because they know and trust the brand. So if you find it, I would run some comps, and if you can get it for cheap enough, they're usually a pretty good pickup. The next sale was over on Mercari, and it was this David Taylor blue striped long sleeve polo shirt in a men's size extra large. This was not like an exciting piece by any means. It was part of some inventory that I purchased from a different reseller who didn't want to resell clothes anymore. So I bought all of her clothes off of her and it came out to like maybe $2 a piece. This sold for $13. And so I made a net profit of $8.82 on that. I had never seen the brand, never tried selling it. So I was like, oh, let me just try and see what happens. I'm not going to be picking up or listing this brand in the future based off of, you know, know, the experience that I had with this particular piece. It did sell like fairly quickly though. I'd say within two weeks, just, you know, not for a lot. And then on Facebook Marketplace, man, I really do not make sales over on Facebook Marketplace anymore. Let me know if you are having luck over there, but like it's to the point where I'm like, is it worth trying to sell on Facebook Marketplace? I don't know. But I sold this Banana Republic blue plaid button down linen blend shirt in a size small for men. This was actually something that my husband gave me to resell as he was cleaning out his closet. So I had no money into it, but it sold for $25, which was kind of shocking. So I made a profit of $23.37. That is like my first and greatest tip that I give people who want to resell. I always tell them, clean out your closet first. Do not go out and thrift. Just see what you have laying around at home because you probably have great stuff that you can make some really good money off of without spending money first. And that's exactly what happened here. We just happened to clean out our closets as we were getting ready to move. My husband found some pieces that, you know, he wasn't wearing anymore and I was able to make some money off of them. On Friday, which was March 31st, this was such a busy day. Like I said, we had two closings and then we went home after the second closing and put our entire house onto, I think it ended up being three trucks. <laughs> a lot of that is because of my reselling stuff. Um, but I still managed to sell three things on eBay. The first one was this new in the package, Mambi, that stands for me and my big ideas. It is the company that makes Happy Planner, which I love, I've been using Happy Planner now for like, I don't even know how many years, but it was a set of green medium discs. There's like 11 discs and this is what you use for the Happy Planner system. It's like you kind of clip your papers into these discs. I just found these again as I was decluttering and packing up all of my stuff. Um, it was still new in the package. I knew I was never gonna use them. So I just went ahead and listed it really quickly, just right there in the moment as I found them. And they sold for $9.99. They were promoted at 3%. I made a net profit of $7.70. And that's not a lot of money, but it probably took me like two minutes to get that listed. So, you know, $7.75 for let's say five minutes of work, not bad. The next thing to sell was this Polo by Ralph Lauren blue and white striped full zip sweater in a size large. This one sold for $45. I had $2 into it because I got it from a friend of mine who just gave me all of his clothes that he wasn't wearing anymore before he moved to another city. Um, so I had a net profit on that sweater of $36.18. I cannot tell you how much Polo by Ralph Lauren I have passed on at the thrift store because I didn't think that there was that much value in it, but especially because this particular friend of mine gave me so much Polo Ralph Lauren, I now see that there's so much value in this brand. If you find it, and especially if you're finding it for like, you know, pretty cheap, but if you find this brand, especially like, you know, sweaters, hoodies, pullovers, that sort of thing for men, Oh my gosh, like it sells at a minimum of like $25 to $30, but I've sold a lot of my friend's stuff by this brand for like $50, $60. There's some good money to be made in this brand. And then the last thing to sell on this Friday was this New With Tags Perry Ellis Blue Slim Fit Suit Jacket. The jacket was in a size 40R and the pants were in a 32 by 30. This came from the same friend, so I had $2 into the suit and I sold that suit for $79.90. I made a net profit on that suit of $68.94 and that was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had it priced at 
hundred dollars, but I was feeling extra generous and I was like, let me just send out, you know, an even better offer than I normally would. Um, and it worked. Someone accepted my offer. So I made the sale and I made a really great profit off of that suit. I'm like looking outside and it looks like it's going to storm. So Saturday, which was April 1st, this is the day that we moved into the house that I'm currently sitting in. It was another ridiculously crazy day, but the first thing to sell on Saturday was this Patrizia Pepe Frenze gray embroidered vest. It had like hook and eye loop closures along the front and it was in a European size 44. Um, this sold for $30. I didn't really know anything about this brand. I got it in a thread up mixed rescue box not too long ago and I looked up comps and just couldn't find very many for this brand or for things similar to this item. And that's why I priced it probably around like 40 or 50. I think I got an offer for 30 and it was one of those pieces that I just felt like I would sit on for forever if I didn't just accept reasonable offers. So that one I just went ahead and accepted so I wouldn't have to sit on it for like another year and continue to look back and lament on how I could have moved this faster had I just not been, you know, super greedy. So I moved it for 30 and I made a net profit of $24 on that. I'm saying that I didn't have any money into it because that particular thread up box, I unboxed the first half of on whatnot. And then I never got around to doing like a part two and unboxing the rest of it. So I just sold what was left in the box. But the amount of money that I made in the whatnot sale as I unboxed the first half was enough to cover the cost of the entire box. So I'm saying everything else that I'm able to list from the box counts as pure profit, which feels great. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari. It was new, never been opened. It was by the brand Skin & Co. And it was this Roma Truffle Therapy Essential Face Toner. It was 6.8 ounces and it was made in Italy. This was something that I got in a FabFitFun box forever ago. Like FabFitFun had reached out to me once to see if I'd do an unboxing on my channel, so I did. And I don't know, I just like had no desire to try this toner. I do use toner on a daily basis, but I don't know, I already had some, I didn't want to try a different one, so this just kind of sat and sat in my house. And then I was like, I should probably just list this and, you know, have someone else get some use out of it. It sold for $10 and I made a net profit of $8.21. Again, it was just something that was in my house. It took me about two minutes to list. And so for five minutes of work to make $8.21, uh, yes, please. And then on Sunday, which was April 2nd, I made a decent amount of sales, which was great, but also like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to like unpack my house. I don't know where anything is. All of my reselling bins are just like all over the place in this one random room. So it was quite an adventure trying to find everything, but I did and I got everything shipped out. But that's always what happens when I'm sitting there and I'm like, I would really like lots of sales right now because I have nothing better to do than to ship and package. Like nothing sells. And then when I met my busiest, that's when the universe is like, let's throw her some sales. I think she could really use them right now. So on Poshmark, I sold this nip tuck strapless striped one piece swimsuit. It was in a size six. And I think I used the keyword nautical in the listing title as well. This sold for $16. I got this like three years ago. So nip tuck is not necessarily a good swimsuit line. Um, I think it's like one of the cheaper ones, but not knowing that and just thinking that I needed to stock up on swimsuits this one particular spring, you know, like two or three years ago, I picked it up at a local Goodwill for about $4. So I had a net profit of $8.80 on that swimsuit. The next thing to sell was by the brand Current Elliott. It was the cropped straight jean mid-rise skinny jeans in a size 25. These sold for $40 and I bought them at a local Goodwill because they were half off. So I got them for $3.50. Otherwise, I would not have bought them because I don't know, this brand just like does not move very well for me anymore. It honestly never moved that well for me to begin with. I feel like it was really popular at one point, but I never found it when it was popular. I only found it when people were kind of over it and that's why like for me, it just never really did super well. But I made a net profit of $28.50 on those. So I was pretty happy with that. The next sale was by another denim brand that a lot of resellers pass on these days because it doesn't perform as well as it used to. That brand being AG Adriana Goldschmidt. But these were a pair of new jeans. They were white and they were the stilt cigarette crop jeans in a size 29. The stilt cigarette jeans by Adriana Goldschmidt are a popular style. But again, with skinny jeans just not being as popular these days, they are much, much harder to move, I feel like. These, however, sold for $75 and I had $0 in to them because a friend of mine gave them to me for free. So I made a net profit of $60. I've talked about this friend before, but her husband had bought her like two or three pairs of jeans 
um, that just were not her size. And so she reached out and was like, do you want these? And I was like, okay. And I, in turn, brought over a bunch of clothes that my kids had outgrown because um, she's got kids who are a little bit younger than mine. So it always works out where my kids' clothes will fit her kids, which is great. So it was a great like little barter that we did. You know, She gave me three pairs of jeans to resell and I gave her a bunch of clothes for her kids to wear. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the next thing to sell was over on eBay and it was this vintage Lauren Ralph Lauren pink silk tropical print wrap skirt in a size eight. This I got a long time ago from a local reseller who decided to stop reselling so she could focus more on like her mom and her family and just other projects that she had going on in her life. So she sold me all of her inventory and I paid like a dollar and two cents per item. And so I sold that skirt for $44 and 99 cents and I made a net profit of $36 and 46 cents. Similar to Polo Ralph Lauren, Lauren Ralph Lauren is a brand that I slept on for many, many years, but it does so well, especially the women's Lauren Ralph Lauren. And so now when I'm at the thrift store, if I find Lauren Ralph Lauren for cheap, and if I find especially like anything with a Southwestern print, or even like this, this was 100% silk, it was tropical print, this kind of stuff by this brand can do really well as evidenced by the sale. So don't sleep on it the way that I did for many years, assuming that it's not worth much. It absolutely is. The last sale that we'll talk about in today's video was over on Mercari. It was by the brand Ivry, Ivry? I don't know if I'm saying that right. This is another brand that I pass on all the time at the thrift store and will continue to because <laughs> I don't think it's really worth that much. But this I got from the reseller who didn't wanna resell clothes anymore. And even though I was not impressed by the brand, I thought the piece was actually kinda cute. And with it being a little bit bigger of a size, I was like, okay, let me just go ahead and list it and see what happens because I've never tried listing this brand before. So it was this green animal print drawstring waist v-neck tunic in a 2x. I listed it and pretty quickly I got an offer on it on Mercari. The offer was $10, but I went ahead and took it. And after my cost of goods, which was $2 and Mercari's fees, I made a net profit of $6.21. So I tried it. I learned that it can sell pretty fast, although I think the fact that this was a pretty cute piece coupled with the size, I think that that helped but I also learned that I'm not gonna be picking it up in the future. Those were my sales for the week, and what I learned is that there were a lot of things that sold that were not necessarily my cup of tea. I think there are a lot of resellers out there who preach the idea that you should only pick up and sell what you yourself love and are passionate about, and I think that there's value to that, especially if you are a reseller that doesn't have a ton of space and you have to be really picky about what it is that you keep in your home. I have a lot of space. I've always had a lot of space, so I don't have to be picky and I'm not. I pick up really anything and everything that will make me money. I will sell things that I find in my house that I know I'm not gonna make that much money off of. And part of the reason why I do that is because I don't think I live in a town where I could find enough stuff that I love and am passionate about to be able to list consistently. If I went off of that model, I'd probably only be able to list like I don't know, 10 to 20 pieces a week, and it would just be really hard finding pieces. Of course, I could go the route of like, you know, sourcing online, and I could do a lot of different things. But for me personally, I like going out to thrift stores and consignment stores and sourcing myself, and I don't even super mind buying like, you know, in bulk from other people and just getting a lot of stuff um, because I am not the type of person that won't list something because I don't like it. If I feel like it's gonna make me some money, I will go through the process of listing that item. So for me, I subscribe to the idea of if it's gonna make me money, I'm gonna go ahead and list it and sell it. And I feel like this week is a really good example of how by not being picky about what it is that I list online, I actually did okay for myself because I sold a lot of stuff this week that I wasn't super excited about or passionate about, but it made me money. And that's what I'm here for is to make money. So those are my sales for the week. Let's talk some numbers. On Poshmark, I sold four items, which is still really bad. and. I don't know, you guys. I've heard that Poshmark has just been sucking immensely for a lot of people. And I, I think that's true. I mean, actually, in the coming weeks, I do talk about something that I tried and it was successful to a degree, but it kind of created more work on the back end. I'll talk about it when I get there. I don't know. I don't want to sink that much time and effort into a platform that just continues to shoot itself in the foot day in, day out. I don't know, I don't really understand what they're doing over there. I don't feel like it's really helping 
people like me who want to sell consistently on that platform. Um, but I also hear some people are doing great. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments how Poshmark is doing for you. I feel like I've been hearing a lot of, you know, people saying that it's been really rough for them as well, but ooh, four sales. And the week before that I had seven and the week before that I had two, it's, it's been rough, but I sold those four items for a gross sales amount of $161. Once you factor in Poshmark's fees and any discounted shipping that I offered, that total drops to $128.80. My cost of goods for those four items was $7.50, and so I made a net profit of $121.30. On eBay, I sold seven items for a gross sales amount of $275.87. Once you factor in eBay's fees, that total drops to $229.85. My cost of goods on eBay was $14.94, and so my net profit was $214.91. I sold three things on Mercari, and that was for a gross sales amount of $33. Once you factor in Mercari's fees, that total drops to $27.24. I had four dollars into those items and so I made a net profit on Mercari of $23.24. I sold one item on Facebook Marketplace for a gross sales amount of $25. Once you factor in Facebook Marketplace's fees, that total drops to $23.37. I had nothing into that item because it was my husband's and so I made a net profit on Facebook Marketplace of $23.37. So in total, I sold 15 items this week, the craziest week of my life, I feel like, for a gross sales amount of $494.87. Once you factor in shipping and fees, that total drops to $409.26. I had $30.44 into those 15 items. That's like, you know, $2 an item, which is really, really cheap. And so my net profit for the week was $378.82. Also in all of March, I made a net profit of $1,063.11. Whew, that is that is rough. That is rough times. But March was a busy month, as I already explained. It was filled with traveling and with, did I get COVID in March? No, I had COVID in February, but it was filled with traveling and it was filled with getting ready to move and actually moving. It was a busy, busy month and I'm thankful to have made any money from the side hustle. So while not anywhere near my goal, I was thankful for it. And I'm thankful for you guys. Thank you for sticking around this long into the video. I appreciate you and I hope you are doing great and just so excited for summer. I know I am. I am very excited to not have to wear stuff like this anymore. I need this weather to figure itself out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!